Now we're going to look at another type of triangle, which is the 30, 60, 90. So where, how do we get this triangle? First of all, I have ABC, which is an equilateral triangle with side length 2, and I picked 2 to make my numbers easier. We should find the measure of each angle. Well, it's an equilateral triangle, so each of the angles is 60 degrees. Then I want you to label the midpoint of AB as point D. All right, how long is BD, this piece right here? Well, it should be half of the side, which is 1. So BD is 1. Now we're going to draw segment DC right there. Now which is bigger? This angle over here, and let me go ahead and get my highlighter. Is it this angle right there, ADC, or BDC, the angle on the other side? Well, hopefully you'll notice that it's neither. Both of them are 90 degrees. So um, basically we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle where one side is 1, the leg is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. But let's go ahead and find this missing leg, the thing that becomes the altitude. All right. So let me shade in. There's my new triangle. And, oh, and the other thing is I need to make a note. That is 30 degrees. How did I know that? Well, I know this is 90 on the bottom here. Uh, we have 60, so this small angle up here is 30 degrees. And I got the 30 just by saying 90 plus 60 plus x is 180 and solving. So let's go ahead and find that missing leg. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. Uh, 1 squared plus x squared, that's our x, equals 2 squared. 1 plus x squared is 4, subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x squared is 3. So that means x is the square root of 3. So again, this is important to note, x is the square root of 3. So we have 1 is the short leg, square root of 3 is the long leg, and 2 is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple more triangles. One thing we've already noticed is that the um, hypotenuse is twice the leg, so that one's pretty easy to fill in. Now I'm going to find my missing leg by basically doing that last step of the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared minus 1 squared, this is the work we did before, square root of 3. Same thing here, 4 squared minus 2 squared, 12, square root of 12. 6 squared minus 3 squared is 27, square root of 27. 20 squared minus uh, 10 squared is going to be 300, because you have 400 minus 100 is 300. And then we've got this last one, 2n squared plus n squared. That's actually going to be 3n squared. And part of the reason is that 2 is squared also, so that's 4n squared. Uh, and that should be a minus. Let me go ahead and change that. Pointer, pen. This should be a minus, not a plus. All right? So 2n squared minus n squared is 3n squared. But what is my generalization? Well, you might notice that here to here, this is just double the other, 1.732. And if you look at this one right here, that's 10 times 1.732. So this number that it's being multiplied every time is the square root of 3. So by induction, that means looking at the pattern, we can see that the long leg is square root of 3 times the leg opposite the 30 degree angle, so the short leg, all right? And that's our pattern. But now we're going to go ahead and prove it. So I have 2p here. I know that's going to be p. So let me prove that this is going to have a square root of 3. So I'm going to say, we'll call that x. x squared plus p squared equals 2p squared. And then I have to square both those, so that's 4p squared, subtract 3p squared, take the square root, and you can separate them, and you end up with square root of 3 times p, which leads to the triangle that's on your math chart. They have an x there instead of a p. So those are just variables representing some random number for your smallest leg. So in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is 2 times the length of the short leg, and the length of the longer leg is the length of the shorter leg times square root of 3. Uh, it's probably easier to just use the reference triangle on your math chart and set up proportions. So again, draw the triangle from your math chart. Replace the x's with 1's. Use corresponding sides. Set up a proportion. Cross multiply your proportion to get a simpler equation and solve. 
And you really should rationalize the denominator if there is a square root in the denominator, which will occur maybe a half, a third of the time. Okay. So let's look at this example. Um, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I know the long leg, and I know it's long because it's across from the 60 degree angle, right? So that's bigger than the leg across from the 30 degree angle. So I need to find the other sides. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put up my 30, 60, 90 for my math chart. I actually had to reflect it and rotate it. So that's why it looks a little bit backwards. But let me replace my x's with 1's. And I have this triangle. I'm going to put X here for the side I'm looking for. And you can see my corresponding sides. I can set up a proportion. 5 over X is the same as square root of 3 over 1. Cross multiply. Then I have to divide both sides by square root of 3. And I get X equals 5 over square root of 3, which is the answer. Uh, ideally, we don't like the square root in the denominator, so I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying it by square root of 3 over square root of 3. The bottom becomes 3, and the top just becomes 5 square root of 3. And that's your final answer for that side. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a shortcut. Since I know the short leg is 5 square root of 3, the hypotenuse, which I don't have up here, is just twice that. So I'm just going to say 2, 2 over 1, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2, times 5 square root of 3 over 3, and that gives me 10 square root of 3 over 3 is the hypotenuse. So for further reflection, how did we make the 30, 60, and 90 triangle? We started with the square for the 45, 45, 90. What did we start with for the 30, 60, 90? And by the way, which is bigger, 2 or square root of 3? A lot of people want to think that square root of 3 is bigger because, well, 3 is bigger than 2. But square root of 3 is 1.73. It's not all the way to 2. Square root of 4 is 2, but not square root of 3. And that's helpful when you're trying to compare uh, the sides there and using that reference triangle on your math chart. What shortcuts do you see for finding the other sides if you know the shortest leg of the triangle? Yes, you could probably figure out a really easy way if you know the shortest leg to kind of skip the proportions and pretty much write down the answers. And you have my permission to look for that. See if you can figure it out. So, and finally, what is a good way to change the reference triangle on the math chart so it is easier to use? I usually replace those X's with 1's, especially since some of our problems will already have an X in it, and all those X's can be very confusing. And why are the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90 triangles so special?